Hudson Stadium in Kennewick. It's the first round of the 4A state playoffs and what promises to be a tough physical football game between two of the best defensive teams in all of Washington. Tonight's matchup pits the Mid-Columbia Conference champion Richland Bombers against the Central Valley Bears out of the Greater Spokane League. Alongside handsome over here, Greg Talbot. My name is Brian Levitan and Greg, the uh, cliche goes something like this, defense wins championships, but tonight only one of these dominant defenses can move on and possibly play for a state championship. Well, that's true, Brian. Not only are these two defenses some of the best in all of Eastern Washington, at the four level, they're some of the best ones in the entire state of Washington. So let's go ahead and take a look at the coach's keys to the game, beginning with the Bears. First of all, capitalize on mistakes. Your defense has an unheard of 25 interceptions this season on defense. So when Richland eventually hucks one of those up, you got to make sure to score on that drive. Next up, stop the run. Contain Lakota Wills uh, and really all three of those tough Richland running backs, but specifically Lakota Wills. Then sustain drives. Make sure to go through the air to beat that tough Richland defensive line. These short slant passes, tiny little patterns to keep the drives moving and keep the clock running. Now for the Bombers. Protect the ball. The Bears defense is one of the best in the state, like we said, so you can't afford to make any mistakes. Then go ground and pound. Again, the Bears defense has 25 interceptions this season. You can kind of eliminate that defensive secondary by choosing to run the ball as much as you can. Then unleash the Hounds. Again, a three running back attack for the Richland Bombers. All three of them great in their own ways, so kind of get them all involved in four central to stop them on defense. Well, the Bears' uh, MO all season long has been their defense. That's how they've won football games primarily, but they'll be counting on a field general on the offensive side of the ball if they want to come away with a win tonight in uh, Richland's home turf. That's absolutely true, Brian. So like we said, they run a spread attack, and that is quarterbacked by Tanner Sloan. He's a guy who's just not prone to mistakes. He's got a great arm, a tried and tested leader, maybe not the most touchdowns of any guy in the greater Spokane League, but not many interceptions. He does not make mistakes. For the uh, Richland Bombers, they have the luxury of one of these once-in-a-generation type players, a man among boys, Lakota Wills. A great two-way player is on offense and defense, but we're talking about him here on offense. Again, one of those three running backs. He's the bruiser of that group, and he's so good that he signed on to play college football next season at Air Force. He's the bruiser of that gang. He's the biggest one to stop, and if you can contain Lakota, they might have a chance to beat the Bombers. Well, thank you, Greg. Uh, the winner tonight takes one step closer to Tacoma and has a chance possibly to play for for a state championship down the line. It's Central Valley in Richland next on SWX. Central Valley won the toss here and decided to kick it away and defer to the second half. The Bears again come in with an 8-2 record. 4-1 in GSL 4A play finish. Second behind Gonzaga Prep. They, of course, wearing the away white uniforms with Columbia blue helmets. And the Richland Bombers at 9-1, riding a nine-game winning streak since they, of course, lost to the same team, Zaga Prep, at the start of the season. They won nine games since, and they're wearing the uh, traditional bomber green and gold. It's about 60 degrees tonight. Pretty warm for a football game in November, but windy. A little bit gusty. And here is the opening kickoff. That sails deep into the back of the end zone. Ryan Rikau has got himself a boot, by the way. Yeah, that's a terrific a leg. kicker. That's a and leg. Uh, Griffey March, no opportunity to return that. So let's take a look at the offensive starters for the Richland Bombers, taking a look at their key offensive impact players. And you see it there, the bottom three players, Lakota Wills, McLean Elgin, and Kyle Whitby. They have a three running back attack. Paxton Stevens, the quarterback, and Griffey Marsh, their leading wide receiver. But Paxton Stevens, again, he's got a lot of great weapons. But like we said, the keys of the game, Brian, uh, 25 interceptions this year for Central Valley on defense. They're going to go to the ground a lot for the Richland Bombers. And that battle in the trenches is definitely one to watch. First and 10 from the 20, and it's Kyle Whitby who gets the first carry for Richland and turns the corner on the far side of the field across the 25 to the 27. So a seven-yard gain, and this is what makes the Bombers so tough to defend, Greg, is they have so many different ways the running backs can hurt you. Absolutely. There's a look at Paxton Stevens away. Their quarterback can hurt you. Brian, I think you told me a couple weeks ago on that game against Kamai on an SWX, he hooked it up over 50 yards. He has an arm. Threw it 62 yards in the air. Granted, it was an incomplete pass. He overthrew his receiver by about 15 yards. But this is a kid with a cannon that not a lot of people know about. Whitby again. Gets just across the 30 and looks like enough to move the sticks for the first time. The Bombers will... 
get the first down. Paxton. And let's go ahead and take a look at these Central Valley defensive impact players. Ben Craig, though, one of the defensive backs. Uh, they have so many guys, Brian, that have a ton of interceptions. I think you said Craig has seven or eight this season just to himself. Yes, yeah, seven interceptions to lead the team. And then Tanner Gummersall also in the defensive backfield with five. All but one starter with an interception this season. Lakota Wills off the fake pass. Goes nowhere. Gets gobbled up by that front four of the Bears, which will be a big test for this uh, Richland offensive line and running attack. Yeah, at the top of the broadcast, and our coach's keys to the game, they said they wanted to contain the Richland to run, specifically contain Lakota Wills. Even though he doesn't have the most carries on the team this season, Lakota's the big bruiser. You see him there on the right side of your screen, committed to play football at Air Force next year. He's their power back. And he's one of these guys who'll wear you out and you miss a tackle, and he's gone for 50 yards. He has speed. Not much doing there on second and nine. Gets just past the line of scrimmage, so a third down and long upcoming for Paxton Stevens and the Richland Bombers. Stevens, by the way, just 14 practices before the start of this season, Greg. Broke his back dunking a basketball over the winter and missed all of the spring and summer program. 14 practices, his first game as a starting quarterback at Richland High School against Gonzaga Prep. And what's crazy to think is if he had had more than 14 practices, maybe they could have beaten Gonzaga Prep, in which case they would be undefeated right now. Third nine, Stevens has time and finds Alex Chapman. Right by the left hash there. And that is right at the first down marker. They're going to give him the first down on third and nine. And that's something the Bombers do really well. I remember that in their win against Kamayakin. Must have converted... 10 third down conversions. It was incredible how efficient they were on third down. From the 41, 9.30 to go in the first quarter. Bombers will run it up the middle. That was Lakota Wills again, not having much success, but it looks like they want to try and keep the Bears a little honest there and, and focus on the middle of the field there. Absolutely true. And one of the reasons that they've had such great success on defense this year, Central Valley, is because, you know, all the interceptions, that's because the starting four up front on their defensive line, they're the ones that force that pressure. So whether it's running or passing, they're the key thing that Paxson Stevens is, is zeroed in on. Wills up the middle, and he is getting a steady diet of white jerseys every time he tries to break free and I think part of the problem is they're spending so much time trying to block Jordan Talafili the uh, defensive tackle you see him there with the long hair he's over 300 pounds been a starting defensive tackle on this team in the GSL since he's a freshman he's a junior and uh, he he commands so much attention uh, with the offensive line Wills doesn't have other blockers there to help him out and get some get some yards Stevens rolling on third and six. Going deep for Rhett Levin, and it sails out of bounds. Uncatchable pass. Brings up fourth down. So Alex Chapman with a completed pass, and now they go to Rhett Levin going deep, although that one falls incomplete. Speaks, Brian, to the amount of weapons they have, because neither of those guys were on our offensive impact players to watch list just a couple of minutes ago. They have a ton of different weapons on offense, and it isn't just a couple of players like some teams. Richland has so many different ways they can go on offense. Probably upset some parents out there watching, <laughs> but... Not enough room for players to watch. All uh, emails was, can be a, directed to Brian Levitan. It was it was tough to edit that list. And a quick little pooch punt here from Paxton Stevens. The Bombers like to do that on fourth down often. And on a fourth and six, a beautifully placed pooch by Stevens, who apparently has a leg to go with that big arm. That is downed at the five-yard line. So the drive fizzles for the Bombers. But as far as uh, Central Valley's field position is concerned, the Bombers get a win there. Absolutely true, and, and taking a look now that the first drive of the game is over for these Richland Bombers, you can tell that uh, Lakota Wills is the guy they're looking to stop. Well, let's look at the Central Valley offensive impact players. We talked about it at the top of the game. Tanner Sloan, Scott Peck, though, on the offensive line. Boy, is he a big guy, Brian. Headed to Utah next year. Six foot seven, over 300 pounds, and Gage Cannoli has uh, given them some stability at the running back position. He brings up a big touchdown run. I know you're going to say, holy cannoli. I know it. I'm going to just keep you guessing. <laughs> From the five-yard line, 
Bears like to operate out of the spread, and they go to the air first, and they like to do that. That pass intended for uh, Braden Anderton, but uh, falls falls incomplete. You see Tanner Sloan right there, senior quarterback, and a starter at Central Valley for the last two years. His dad, Rick Sloan, is the offensive coordinator. Rick Sloan played his college football at the University of Idaho. On the offense, that penalty has declined. Second down. So rather than taking the yards because it's only half the distance of the goal, Greg, they uh, decide to decline it and make it second down. But uh, Rick Sloan played his college football at the University of Idaho under a pretty well-known guy named Derek er Dennis Erickson. Indeed. And uh, Andrew Sloan basically grew up around this football team. And you can tell he knows this offense inside and out. Sloan will hand it off with room, getting the first and much more. Gage Cannoli with his first run, and it is a big one, 20 yards. Well, holy cannoli, Brian, look at him. Not a lot of space there. By the way, Richland, that's a big defensive line, the couple guys they have up front. It's kind of a shifty running back. Of the, of the Richland Bomber running backs we want to compare him to, he's more like Kyle Whitby and McLean Elgin, less like Makota Wills. First down from the 22. Play action. The pass is deflected and intercepted. Brecken Gallagher is going to take it in for the score. <laughs> 21 yard return by Gallagher. And how ironic, Alanis Morris said. Oh, but a team that some people say leads the nation with 25 interceptions. Gives up a pick six here at the 7.35 mark of the first quarter, and it's Richland striking first. And what's so interesting is, you know, Central Valley with 25 interceptions. You said, Brian, that a lot of those interceptions have come off tip balls by the other team. The fact that it goes Richland's way at the very beginning, that's a little bit strange. Ryan Walski with the extra point. And he splits the uprights. We mentioned that Ryan Rikau is one of the best kickers in Eastern Washington. Wolski, no slouch either, but you see it there. Beautiful deflection by none other than number 45, Lakota Wills. Not only is he one of the great running backs in this part of the state, but you know what's interesting is uh, it sounds like over at Air Force next year, they want him to play mostly defense. He's an offensive and defensive stud. And I remember a couple years ago, Brian, you and I were doing games and he was only a sophomore. We were wondering what's he going to be like as a senior. Well, now we know what he's like as a senior. He's arguably the best player in the Mid-Columbia Conference. I think that's the right call to make him a defensive player. I mean, he's 6'3", 250 pounds. He, he has the speed, but what a great defensive end or linebacker. That's his natural position. It's tough when you get to the Division I level uh, when you're that tall to be an effective running back. I think it gets a little bit harder. So the first score of this game, courtesy of one of the defenses. It's always nice when we foreshadow accordingly in the pregame show. I think we got it mostly right. 21-yard interception return by Brecken Gallagher of Richland off the deflected pass. Lakota Wills, the defensive end for the Bombers, deflecting the Tanner Sloan pass into the hands of number 15, who took it the distance. Central Valley. Basically a road game for them. Although this is technically not Richland's home field. It is their backyard, so to speak. Just a few minutes away from Richland here in Kennewick, Washington. And seeing some of that uh, gustiness I was talking about earlier. The uh, ball is blown off the tee. Well, it's been a windy couple of days here in the Tri-Cities, as is usually prone to do during the summer. But it can also get like this in the winter. And i got to tell you, you got to be happy that there are the stands here at Lampson because elsewhere in the Tri-Cities, smaller stadiums with smaller stands, it's very hard to play in this wind. A little bit of a duck there from Wolski. Fielded at the 25 and taken out to the 30 by Alec Doyle. How will the Bears respond? And that's always the question in games like this because when you're in the first round of the state playoffs, the competition is going to be pretty fierce. And uh, you're going to get punched in the mouth a couple of times. And this kind of game is really the case you make in a couple of years for maybe trying to seed playoff teams as opposed to the blind preseason draw.
that they do here in Washington. We'll talk about that after this play. First and 10 from the 30. Four receivers in Cannoli to his left. Sloan. Play action. Screen pass. Gets a yard. Pass was caught by Braden Orino. So like we were saying, this, this is the game that kind of actually really makes you want to think about doing a blind draw. We'll talk about that in a second. Richland Bombers, Lakota Wills on defense, obviously tipped that first one. Brecken Gallagher below him on the graphic, ran it back. We already saw two of the defensive impact players on the first couple of plays against Central Valley. And John Hardy is another guy who likes to apply pressure up front along with Wills, and Alex Chapman leads the Bombers with five interceptions. Second down and nine. Cannoli trying to escape and then fumbles. The ball still on the ground and recovered by Central Valley. Tanner Sloan falls on it. Cannoli was doing everything he could to escape the grasp of number 45. Look at Lakota. He knows just how to unhook from a defender and go after the ball. So let's mark that. First couple of plays for Central Valley. He tipped the ball, then ended up being the interception, and then forces a fumble. I'm glad a defensive player like that is going to be defending my country one day. It's true. Fake pass, and then the handoff to Cannoli. Kind of a delayed run there. Mildly productive, gets three yards. But it's going to be third down. Excuse me, fourth down, as that was third down. And uh, 25, so a country mile at minimum. And Rips on a great special teams unit as well, known to block the occasional punt. Big, fast guys on the line. High, booming kick from Ryan Rical, fielded by Griffey March. At the 20, bounces around a couple white shirts and gets pushed out at the 44-yard line. There is a flag on the play, though, so have to see if there was some sort of a block in the back or a hold because he was able to spring free. When it looked like he was dead to right, it's going to be nailed. That is one thing the Bears have working in their favor is their kicker, Ryan Rikau. He's a great field goal kicker, but he's a better punter. And even when they're pinned back in their own zone, he's a Division I-level punter. Holding. Number 24 on the return team, 10-yard penalty. First down, Richland. Against Riley Mahoney. So that was uh, going to be first down and 10 from the 44, and now they're backed up to their own 15. But Rikau has, uh, when the Bears have struggled a little bit on offense, really bailed them out and helped them maintain that advantage in the field position. Kind of a lifeline and a safety blanket, if you will. So these Richland Bombers already a touchdown advantage. 5.53 to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 Richland. And it's been fun here already. First round of the 4A State Playoffs on SWX. Take a look at this. Well, speaking of campers, the... Uh, Bombers head coach Mike Neidholt has to be a pretty happy camper with the way his defense is playing <laughs> in the early going. So in the first Richland drive, they got a, plenty of yardage, but Lakota Wills didn't get a whole lot of yardage as their halfback. First and 10 out of the TV timeout from the 15. And they seem pretty determined to, to try and attack in the middle of that line there, and they haven't had much success there. And you got to think this is obviously part of the game plan, talking to Mike, Holt, Mike, uh, Mike Neidhold this week. He knows all about the, 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 the how terrific the secondary is for Central Valley. The more you can run, the less chance they're going to throw an interception. But, man, look at that strong front four for the Bears. Second and nine. Play action. Quick pass. Stevens. And Griffey March tackled immediately without any opportunity to get yards after the catch by Alec Doyle. So even when the Bombers are passing so far today, they know pressure is coming, and they're not looking deep over the middle. They're looking for these little out routes where there isn't much of a chance of an interception or a tip. That was actually Ben Craig on the tackle, number three, not number eight, and uh, 
He is their top corner. Charged with covering Griffey March in the slot. Stevens on third and short goes to March who makes the catch and gets the first down. And that is a gutsy throw to go over the middle into zone triple coverage. That is a gutsy throw from Paxton Stevens. And the repertoire that he has developed with Griffey March and some of the other receivers so early on is amazing. That's, a, that's an NFL level catch by March going low like that to bring that in. It's a little West Coast offense kind of play. From the 26 on first down, Whitby. Jukin and Jivin to the 28. Gets seven yards. And it seems like those off right or left guard runs have worked a little better. You know those defensive guys are going to bust through the line. So as long as your offensive line knows their assignment, knows their alignment, is able to create the right kind of hole, you can pick up a steady stream of yards every time. Bombers really like going to Kyle Whitby, one, because it keeps Wills fresh on the defensive side of things as Whitby gets the call there. He's also probably the most sure-handed of their three running backs. Gets close to the first down marker, but he looks like he's just a bit short. And you got to imagine that's because of his family's history here at Richland High School. Don't forget his brother Zach used to be a quarterback here. Played for about two and a half years as the starting quarterback. And they're going to say he was close enough. So instead of third down, it is a first down and 10 from the 36. Bombers have had some bright spots on offense thus far, but they haven't been able to make it past the middle of the field yet. Only one offensive series prior to this. Stevens going to throw, and the pass caught by March. Room to run around Craig. Still going. Pushed out at the 16-yard line. We saw it on the punt return just a few minutes ago, Brian, and now we see it here with limited space, able to spring free with very little apparent effort. 30-yard pass here from March, from Stevens, I should say, to March. What a great move around the of the corner. And the spin was great. Doesn't need much room to make stuff happen. Quick moving first quarter here, only three minutes left. Griffey March led the Mid-Columbia Conference, both in receptions with 43 and 537 yards. Added to that total on that pass. Little hook and ladder action. March to McLean Elgin, his first time touching the football. A for effort. A for effort, but a probably, for creativity. A, probably a, an F for Productivity, that seems like an extreme way of grading it. I like the creativity, they're, they're going for the win, they're being aggressive. Well, the way they're approaching this game, you can tell they know how good Central Valley is, but they're not afraid of them. They're not afraid to pass into that secondary, not afraid to mix it up. I like the confidence. Took the words right out of my mouth right there. Stevens in the corner, fade route for Alex Chapman. That's that, out of bounds. Yeah, that is a gutsy throw because Christian Williams right there, even though he isn't, you know, one of the highlight players on the Central Valley defense, fact of the matter is every one of these players that is a starter in the Central Valley secondary is a guy who can easily pick a couple passes off a game. Offensive coordinator Josh Jelinek, the Bombers, did some tweaking to their offense. This past winter, they've had a lot of success since. Rolling out the pass to March, caught to the pylon. The official goes flying down to the ground. There is a flag in the backfield, probably coming back. They say it's a touchdown. That would be a 14-yard touchdown pass if it stands, but usually if you know some laundry in the backfield, that means it's... And they're, they're walking back like this is coming back against the Bombers. It is against Richland. Holding on the offense, number 79, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay the down. And normally when a quarterback's able to get that much space and kind of evade the defense for as long as he did against a great front line like Central Valley, that's usually going to be holding. So instead of a touchdown on third down and nine, it's now going to be third and 20. The ball of the 26-yard line. Bombers have themselves a very capable kicker whose range extends out to about 40 yards. 
which really separates them in the regular season in the Mid-Columbia Conference. Because you can say, Brian, arguably they are the only team in the MCC with a capable kicking unit. For field goals, that is. Third and 20, four receivers. Stevens will pass. Little out pass, pass to March. Escapes a couple. And finally tackled at the 15-yard line. And Griffey March is so deceptive. He's 5'8", 160 pounds. He doesn't look like he's got the build of an elite receiver, but he's he's like a little Welker, a little Wes Welker. That's the analogy I can come with. And uh, he's very effective. I wonder why. Uh, he, like we said a couple minutes ago, he doesn't need very much wonder space. wonder why. What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, he's, a, he's a fast little guy. He doesn't need very much space. But like we said, a capable kicking unit, really the only team in the MCC in the regular season, able to pull this off. This is what separates them from the pack. Ryan Wolski will attempt the field goal. 38 yards. The kick is up. And it is good. Looked like... A couple of white shirts might have gotten a hand on it potentially, but it, it sails through to make it 10 to nothing. And any way you can get points against a quality defensive team like Central Valley, got to take them. And that drive, although it did highlight Paxson Stevens, what a great little showcase for Griffey March. A couple short passes, a couple long passes. He was able to do so much and, again, kind of showcase his skill set. One thing I love about Griffey March is he has... Um, the skills that you look for in a receiver, the hands, and he can make those NFL type of catches, the back shoulder catch. Um, he can go low and get the ball. He's really good at creating in space or even when he doesn't have space. He's not afraid of contact for being such a small receiver. Well, it's kind of a bowling ball. There are a lot of guys we've seen this season in the Mid-Columbia Conference who are his size, who are running backs. For a lot of teams in the MCC, they would have made him a running back. I would say that number three is one of the big reasons. Him, Rhett Levin, Ryan Wolski, the kicker, is also a very capable receiver. He's like fourth on the depth chart, which gives you an idea of how good they are, fourth or fifth. But, uh, you know, that they're so good on third down. You know, a third down and long, they can just pick you apart. It's almost soul-crushing for another defense. High popped-up kick. Ball is loose there, and I don't know who got there because Central Valley definitely touched it. And Richland says they recovered. Bombers got it. And I can't tell whether that was intentional or if that was a high kick because of the wind. Either way, that is a case where the bigger team that is expecting it is able to get their hands on that ball. See it right there, and it's one of those things that where... That can't have been an accident. I think he just got under it and popped it up. And because, then the wind kept it in the air like that. Because I, I'd never see a skip kick that high up in the air. That's uh, insane. Second turnover of the football game by the Bears. Still 118 to go in the first quarter. So things not going the way head coach Rick Giampetri and the Bears would have wanted here in the Tri-Cities. Quick pass to Rhett Levin, his first reception on first and 10 from the 34. And that's enough to move the sticks as he is brought down at the 22. And I know, Brian, looking at your pregame coach's keys to the game here, one of the ones for Central Valley, sustained drives. Really not very much luck of that at all in the first quarter. That was Jim Petrie's really big concern Whoops. when I talked to him this week. Very concerned about just how ferocious that front four for Richland was. Steven's going to throw. Oh, dangerous. Pass is behind Alex Chapman and a flag against Ben Craig of the Bears, who uh, not happy about the call. It'll be a pass interference, I would imagine, and a 15-yard penalty. Haven't seen a ton of penalty flags so far here in the first quarter, although they have been meaningful penalties. On the defense, number three, half the distance to the goal. Aaron Brian, there hasn't been a ton of laundry, but the ones that have been thrown have been meaningful. With the ball at the 22-yard line, it's half the distance to the goal. So they'll move it down to the 11. Oh, totally. Got his left hand and knocked it down. Tomahawk chopped him. And the pass probably wasn't catchable anyway with where Chapman was in relation to it. Yeah, behind him. Wills and Whitby keeping Stevens company. 
Wills gets the call. Goes off the right tackle. Inside the 10 yard line to the seven. Under a minute to go in the first quarter, it has been all Bombers. This Richland team has reeled off nine straight wins since a season opening loss to the Gonzaga Bullpups, 13-10, a game in which they missed two field goals. Their starting quarterback at only 14 practices prior to the start of the season. And they are firing on all cylinders here as we begin the state playoffs. Second and seven. Wills, again, no success, running right at the heart of that Central Valley defense. Yeah, he's had a ton of success on defense. He's tipped a ball that ended up being an interception. He forced a fumble, but that's the, the, the big up front starting four for Central Valley. I'd be interested, Ryan, let's take a look and see if we can focus on this for the remainder of this drive. When Lakota Wills is in the backfield, let's see if they're doing anything different on the defensive line. Because Elgin's getting a little bit of space, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. Ten seconds, and the clock and a tick down to nothing here as we take another replay at... Uh, it's a nice job of uh, bottling up the big, burly Lakota Wills. Ten to nothing. Richland on top of Central Valley. First round action of the WIAA 4A State Playoffs on SWX. Second quarter coming up next. Start of the second quarter. See uh, Rick G.M. Petrie, head coach, Central Valley High School in his sixth decade as a coach for high school football. And Started in 1969, 46 years ago. And he can't be psyched about what's happening right now. His team is in a little bit of a pickle. Down 10 to nothing. And the Bombers knocking on the door. The handoff to Whitby on third down and five from the six yard line and a much needed stop there from the front line of Central Valley. And that's what we were looking for between the between the quarters, Brian, during the commercial breaks. It seems like Lakota Wills, when he's in the backfield as the Richland running back, they're bringing the linebackers on the Central Valley defense. They're not giving him any space. But when it's Elgin or Whippy in the backfield, they're not bringing the linebackers. So it's interesting that those guys are getting a little more yardage than, than Lakota. Coach Mike Neidhold going to take the points here. Fourth down at eight. Ryan Wolski in. And he will add another three points to this Bombers lead. It's now 13 to nothing. Wolski now has a 17-yard field goal to go along with the 38-yard field goal he booted earlier in the first quarter. But it is interesting to note now that it's a 13-point lead for the Richland Bowers. In case you're just joining us, Richland Bryan has picked up the vast majority of their yards today through the air. We were kind of expecting to be a lot of different running backs as you see the kick here to make it 13-0. We were expecting that big running attack, but they've noticed it hasn't really been working. They've been passing for most of their yards, which is kind of exactly what we thought would not happen tonight. We thought that would be the exact opposite considering Mike Neidhold knows well just how great this secondary for Central Valley is. Yeah, they're very opportunistic defense, but the secondary success really keys off the amount of pressure that their front four is able to put on Paxton Stevens. And uh, he's been pretty comfortable back there throwing the football. He hasn't been running for his life the way Tanner Sloan has on the other side. Absolutely true. Great offensive line, at least on the pass so far tonight from the Bombers. Last year, or last week, I should say, last year would be a long time ago, but last week, the uh, the Bears had five interceptions, five turnovers, four interceptions, but two of them were off deflected passes. So a lot of it is is that front four wreaking havoc, getting their hands up. And uh, that number mostly is surprising because Chiwana usually doesn't pass very much. We'll credit the Bombers with some great protection of their quarterback. Wolski boots this one into the end zone. No opportunity for a return by Gage Cannoli. And it'll be first and 10 from the 20 for Central Valley. It's 13-0. An oversimplification of things, but from the Bears' perspective here, I'm saying it's a 2-0 game, and they're two touchdowns away. With the way their defense can put points on the board, they have three interceptions returned for touchdowns this season. And the fact that they've got Tanner Sloan, quarterback, you know, who if he gets over 100 yards passing tonight will surpass 4,000 yards. 
as a quarterback in his career. No small accomplishment. And it looks like the Bombers jumped there, but we'll see what the officials say. Adam McShane, happy feet. Dead ball encroachment, number 33 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And what I'm interested to watch here, Brian, as Central Valley comes back in to begin this next drive, when, when they do eventually go to the ground, when they run the ball, let's see if they continue to even try going left. Lakota Wills is on their left side of the line. You see him there, 45. I bet we see him go up the middle or go right. I don't think they'll want to test Lakota anymore. Or maybe I'm wrong. Handoff to Doyle. Lakota Wills blitzed on the outside. Doyle went in the other area. Yeah, he went to the inside. Then again, nice may read. maybe I'm wrong. I'm just a little surprised they continue to, to try to test Lakota Wills, especially after how effective he's been just through a quarter of play. 11-yard run by Alec Doyle. Senior running back is, talk about bowling balls, 5'9", 200 pounds. Runs low and uh, hard to tackle. Sloan with four receivers. Good protection. Screen pass. Braden Orino. Taps down to the 40-yard line. Four-yard pickup. It'll be second and six. One of the keys to the game we brought up at the top of the broadcast, sustained drives. They have not done it very well tonight. Maybe, you know, seeing that they've, Richland's already scored on them three times, they're digging themselves a little bit of a hole. Smaller gains, as long as they keep the clock moving and keep the drive running is just fine. Three, four yards, nothing wrong with that. Play action, Reno again, has a blocker, then runs into several green and gold jerseys. But not before he gains another three yards. And this, I think, is an important third down in two. With 10-10 left to go in the second quarter, you're down 13-0. You've had some things to build on in this drive here. Can they get the conversion here and keep the sticks moving? Sustained drives, your keys to the game. Let's see if they can. Three wideouts, top of the screen. Coach GM Petrie's keys to the game. I'm not that smart. Mm -hmm. Sloan, Room, Arena. They've had success connecting on this drive. Got it. And he just gets there before getting hammered by Kyle Kirby. And I wonder if a flag went up there as a late hit, but uh, the, uh, the marker went down. They'll give him the first. Nice job. That pass was almost overthrown. Nice job of Orino catching it. You can see why they were calling for a flag, even if they didn't get it. Five-yard gain. First and ten now from the 47. Bears trying to crawl across midfield for the first time in this football game. Doyle up the middle. Give him four yards with the forward progress. One thing to note about the Central Valley team, granted a whole new set of players, but it's a testament probably to the coaching staff. They were down the only other time these two teams played each other back in 2008 and uh, ended up winning that game 35-21, coming back later in the game. So a team that you don't want to go to sleep on if you're Richland because of the way they're coached. Second and six. Ball on the 49-yard line. Sloan fakes, then throws to Doyle, who gets popped immediately for a loss by Griffey March, who timed that beautifully. And really going to sleep on any team in the playoffs would be a bad idea, but especially the fact that look at the match for this game. Richland number six in the state and Central Valley number seven in the state. Speaking of which, let's take a second to talk about this. Can we please, it's 2015, can we find a way to start seeding teams? There's no way the number six and seven teams in the state should be meeting each other in the first round of the playoffs. It's ridiculous. Loss of one, it's now third and 11. Sloan will have to throw or he won't. He fakes the throw and then hands it off to Doyle who gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That is a very safe play call for third down and long. There is some laundry on the field. There could not have been a safer play call. Play call. And number 59, John Hardy. That'll help. 
Well, the face mask will give them the first down they wanted. So on a third and 11, they Personal get the conversion. Foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yard penalty results in a first down. So sustaining drives in an alternative way. One thing the Bears, I think, have going for them, just like the Bombers do, is even if they can't punch in the end zone, they have a kicker with the leg to make a 40, 45 yard field goal pretty consistently, which is not, not the norm at the high school level. And, and so they can come away with something positive, some points on this drive. They're just a, another first down probably away from it. Sloan, good protection. Overthrow. Going it. to the far corner. That was the right read. Ben Craig ahead of his defender. There's a flag. The flag, I think, was thrown on that coverage, but earlier on in the play. Might have been against March. Holding on the defense, number three. Ten-yard penalty results in a first down. It is against March. Turnover is an issue for the Bears, but penalty is starting to become a problem for the Bombers. So each team having their Achilles heel in the first half. Another first down. Bears will take it any way they can. At times they've had trouble moving the football the way they want against this Richland defense that was number one both against the run and pass in the mid-Columbia this year. Sloan going to Orino. Without success, he'll lose three on that screen pass. Well defended. Well, here's the thing. We're no longer in the first quarter. We're actually approaching midway through the second quarter. And the Central Valley offense, Brian, I think you would agree, they're still kind of operating like they're trying to feel this Richland defense out. These are all, you saw the third down and long. You saw the draw play. You see little screens, two or three yard passes. I can't tell if they're trying to spring the big play on them on purpose or if they're just not able to break open a 10 yard play by themselves. It's so now second and 14, loss of four on that one. Hand off to Doyle. Had a little room, but gets two yards tackled by Brecken Gallagher. And here's also a different reason you don't want to be trying to test this Richland secondary so much. Look at their cornerbacks. Alex Chapman, Griffey March. You recognize them, they're wide receivers. These are not just corners who have good speed. These are corners who have great hands. Chapman, as I said earlier, with five interceptions on the season, second in the Mid-Columbia Conference, leads the Bombers in that category. Third down in 12 from the 30. Sloan, better run, and it's Lakota Wills. Lakota Wills and Adam McShane partnering for the sack. And that just took him right out of field goal range. The one thing that couldn't happen, Greg, happened right there. I don't know how much more Lakota Wills could really be doing. It's kind of stunning what he's done so far today. And not only getting that upfront push, but sometimes bouncing to the outside like that. And they'll punt. Well, third and 12 now becomes fourth and 22. Yeah, fourth and way too long. They'll punt. They have a, an excellent punter, Enrique, who has a great leg and has the ability to place it very well, too. Griffey March back. Wow, great kick. He will just wave it and uh, let it sail over his head into the end zone. 6.30 to go in the second quarter. An opportunity for the Bears slips through their fingers. But it's still a battle here. 13-0 Richland, Lampson Stadium. First round of the WIAA 4A playoffs at SWX. Nice little shot there of Old Glory. We're celebrating Veterans Day on Wednesday of this week. And how fitting that a star player for the Bombers, Lakota Wills, who will be headed to Air Force next season to defend our country. On defense, and what a great defensive player he has been tonight. Sack, tip ball that ended up being an interception, forced fumble. First down in 10, out of the television timeout from the 20. 
and it's Whitby getting a couple of yards. So this is what's interesting to watch. Kyle Whitby's been getting three, four yards on each carry. Same with McLean Elgin. Lakota Wills has not been able to pick up any more than two or three yards, I think, on any individual carry so far tonight. Watch the linebackers. When Lakota's in the backfield, they kind of bring the blitz, but I'm not sure they do here. Now watch the linebackers. See with McLean in the backfield or Kyle in the backfield what the linebackers do. See, they stay back. On second and eight, Elgin will turn the corner and get an additional three yards. See, the linebackers in the secondary stay back. They're okay allowing a few yards to him, but watch, when it's Lakota, they're going to bring those blitzes. Under six minutes to go in the second quarter. The Bombers have definitely controlled this game. A couple of big plays on defense, a couple of turnovers, one on defense, one on special teams. But the Bears still very much in it. Stevens, a lot of time, but can't find an open receiver. He'll scramble backwards and just uh, lob up a oh! gift and it's somehow caught by Wolski. Are you kidding me? And he's hauled out of bounds on the far sideline at the 35-yard line. Ryan Wolski, how dare you? Jace Edwards. How dare you, Ryan Wolski? And boy, with the reputation of Central Valley, for being ball hawks in that secondary. Jace Edwards, I think his eyes got so wide because it was like Christmas came early and he it just was, missed it. It was a beach ball coming right at him. How did he miss that? Poor kid. Wow. Ryan Wolski with patience to see that was gonna happen too, to stay back. Paxton Stevens, I think gave Mike Neithold a, a coronary there and his quarterback's <laughs> coach too, Tom Moore. And us. Because I couldn't believe he, he threw scrambled that ball. back about 15 yards, spun backward toward the end zone, and, and threw, then just heaved it on his watch, back foot. He throws off his back leg. This is insane, and this is pure arm strength. This is only core and arm strength. Yeah, he threw that 50 yards in the air, and I think Edwards thought it was more of a duck than it was than it ended up being. Oh man. Those are those are the plays when you have two terrific football teams, well coached, like we have here tonight. Those are the plays, the, the turnover here or there, or, or the opportunity missed or, or then gotten by the other team that sometimes decide a game. First and 10 from the 35, four receivers, and Stevens will run it for the first time. And he'll get the first down and a few extra yards. Let me just say before we move on with this drive, if that play had gone for a touchdown, that would have been the play of the year for the Richland Bombers. Crazy. 14-yard run by Stevens on his first run play of the game. Designed run, great blocking up front. And he was able to dart out of bounds with 14 yards under his belt. Bombers again knocking on the door. Will they be able to come away with six points? That is the question. Elgin. Breaks one tackle in the backfield. Does not get any positive yards. Nice job of defending there by Gilbert Chase, one of the star linebackers and, for this uh, Central Valley and football I, team. And I will just say, Lakota Wills is not taking a handoff this drive, and that's kind of dictated. Isn't it interesting that even Lakota Wills not running the, get ball, running the ball, that is what is controlling what Central Valley is doing on defense. Lakota Wills even being off the field is dictating what Central Valley does. Second down and 10. Five minute mark of the second quarter. Hand off to Elgin. Gobbled up. Terrell Harrison and Wyatt Wickham combining on that tackle. Wyatt Wickham, by the way, Greg, just a freshman. 6'2", 260 pounds. They have not afraid some to start meaty freshmen. linemen. Yeah, not afraid to start freshmen on this line. Coach uh, GM Petrie clearly believes you start the most talented players, especially if they have the maturity and the and the dedication and the commitment and the talent. Steven scrambles away. Great job of getting away from pressure. Not doing again. his own Russell Wilson impression, yeah. and this time he will not get away with it. Yeah. Intercepted by Chase, by Gilbert Chase, I should say. You can see that one developing. And in all fairness, that, that is what should have happened a couple of plays ago the first time. 
The only difference between Russell Wilson here and Paxton Stevens, Greg, is when Wilson does this, he throws it out of bounds. And this Bears football team has the ability to come back and to score points. Bombers gave one away there. And I think that's a maturity thing for Paxton Stevens is on first down, it's Alec Doyle going nowhere, actually losing a yard. I gotta tell you, I don't think they fed the, the Richland Bombers front for dinner because they're just <laughs> downright ornery tonight. They're, they're just mean. You could just see it when they're tackling. After that interception, they're like angry. But what a big play there by Gilbert Chase. Well, I it, think, it just breathes new life well, into the Central Valley football team. I think they know that even though they're up 13, two touchdowns for Central Valley back-to-back -back puts the Bears in the lead. This, is a, this game might as well be 0-0. Screen pass on second and 10 by Tanner Sloan. Is caught on the far side of the field by Jace Edwards. So third down and 10, and I think this is what GM Petrie wanted to avoid. They need to sustain drives and get that momentum because they do a lot of short passes. They're looking at the third and 10 after the interception from the 14. And the problem is you don't have that much time in the pocket if you're the quarterback because Lakota Wills is going to get to you. Play clock down to five on third and ten. See? Sloan scrambles, and he goes down in a hurry as uh, he was not going to get out of the grasp of Brigham Whitby, another one of the Whitbys who make an impact on this uh, Richland football team. And that's just another example of what we've been talking about for the last couple, couple of drives. Central Valley, a very talented football team. The problem is this Richland defense, they're not giving it, him any time in the pocket. He's having to scramble or take a sack or something, but this offensive line has not given him any favors. Timeout taken by Richland, their first of the half. After the timeout, Central Valley fourth And a timeout on the field. Timeout on the field, it's fourth down and 14 after the sack by Brigham Whitby. Well, two great defensive teams came up with these graphics. I like the title, Restless Defense. Richland Bombers, first in the Mid-Columbia in pass and rush defense, allowing less than 10 points per game. One shutout, 52 to nothing against another GSL team, Shadow Park. Held, yeah, held number a, four, yeah. Gonzaga Prep, to the lowest point to total for the Bullpeps this season in that 13-10 season opening loss yeah, back the to, Bombers had. Yeah, back-to-back -back seasons, they lost to Gonzaga Prep early. I think it was the first week of the season last year as well. The Richland defense is just terrific. That defensive front, those four guys, they are giving that offensive line fits. They're not getting any time in the pocket, and that's why they haven't been able to get any real offensive passing game going, Brian. Interesting to think here what Mike Neidhold wanted to talk to his team about as the Bombers had called time out there. Recal able to get the kick away. Griffey March fields it, avoids one tackle. And boy, you want to talk about making chicken salad out of chicken, you know what, because he should have been nailed at the 50, and he got seven yards, and, and certain players just know how to do that. We've said it before tonight, he's able to do so much with, with next to nothing. Bombers with their best field position in this football game yeah, this to start a, out a drive from, a the, gift. from the 42-yard line, and they definitely dodged a bullet there after they looked like they were about to score a touchdown and then the ill-advised interception throw by Paxton Stevens. We'll see if Nighthold, perhaps during that timeout, had a little talk with number 17 about being smart. Hand off to Whitby, a little scat back. And he's so good at being shifty and that he's not afraid to deliver a little punishment at the end of a run. Gets eight yards on first down. Not a surprise, it's, it's the same defensive thing, Brian. I know that high school Football teams only have a handful of defensive schemes and plays that they run, but it's the same thing. They're not bringing linebacker blitzes when it's not Lakota in the backfield. And Richland knows that. Believe me, if I noticed that, Mike Knight will notice that earlier. They give Whitby nine yards, so it's second and one. Stevens over the middle. The pass caught by Griffey March at the four-yard line. 
That is a college-style play. That High is schoolers a, do not make that play. That is a needle threader right there. And, and nobody can go low and get a football like Griffey March there. Great timing. That's amazing. Just dropped it right in there like a little teardrop at the end. He threw that with literally no other way that anyone else could touch that ball. Great placement, great. and that's a lot of trust with your receiver if you have a timing route like that. Paxton Stevens, junior quarterback, 6'3", 170, and already wise by, beyond his years. Going end zone, the pass over the uh, outstretched arm of Rhett Levin, well, well should, covered by Ben Craig. Should have been P.I., but that was an uncatchable pass. Way too high. A little bit too high. Yeah. Better to be high and miss where nobody can get it right. than anywhere in the vicinity of number three who can be very dangerous. Yeah, especially this Central Valley secondary. Second down and goal from the seven. Bombers only have one touchdown early on in the first quarter. 126 left before the half. They've got a couple of field goals. We're about to score on their last offensive drive and gave one right back. Lakota Wills willing himself to some positive yardage on that run. And that hasn't been a, an often occurrence for him when he's been running. No, two, three yards has just generally been the, the slow beat of the drum for Lakota coming out of the backfield tonight. There you see Jordan Talafili. Big bad nose tackle now lining up at end here. Oh, he jumped right side. down in goal. And we've got a flag. And it looked like uh, Talafili there jumped. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. That's the last time I take uh, any cues from, from you, Mr. Talbot. I thought he was on the left side of the line. I thought I'm I always that. wrong on my own. I don't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned, I learned a couple of games ago to stop trying to guess who jumped. So that'll back the Bombers up to the 11 yard line, under a minute to go. 13 to nothing. Third down. Big third down. Stevens. Passes complete to Levin. Down to the five. 38 seconds. They'll call a timeout, I'm sure. There that is. And head coach Mike Neidhold will discuss strategy with his offensive unit. He will do that along with his offensive coordinator, Josh Jelinek. As you see, 11 there, fighting his way to the five-yard line. This is a good time, maybe to, uh, I was gonna say a good time to discuss some, some history, but uh, perhaps we'll go with Central Valley's defense. We've been talking a lot about Richland, and their defense has uh, come through with a big interception here and, uh, and certainly been a bend, but broke, don't break defense, Greg, and, and equally impressive numbers. Absolutely true. Just last week, you talked about it a little bit earlier in the broadcast. Five turnovers against the Chihuahua Riverhawks they forced last week, which is really surprising for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, Chihuahua does not throw the ball very much. The fact that they threw four interceptions, I can't think how many times Chihuahua must have passed at all over the course of a game. It is a really uncommon thing. And three shutouts over the course of the season in the greater Spokane League, that's crazy. I was talking to coach uh, Rick Giampetri as it looks like the Bombers will go for the field goal and again take the points. And I think this is something where if the Bears can figure some things out at halftime offensively, they'll, they'll really benefit from the fact that they've been able to prevent six points on these Richland offensive drives as the kick is up. And Wolski easily boots it through. His third field goal of the first half makes it 16 nothing Richland, but again, Greg, the Bombers haven't been able to punch it in the end zone. Central Valley is a very feisty team and very opportunistic, and in an eyelash, they can come right back in this one. And I would not be surprised if the third quarter of this game, not to get sour or anything, I would not be surprised if the third quarter of this game somehow the tide starts to shift towards Central Valley because this is too good a team to not be able to make some real adjustments at halftime. The big story, I think, thus far is the turnovers. Two to one. Richland to Central Valley, and the, the Bears interception was really a gift interception. I think that's a play that Stevens 
was probably firmly reminded yeah. by Coach Neidhold, uh not to do that again. And uh, I just have a hard time believing if he's protected as well as he has been that he'll make a mistake similar to that, but you never know. Especially if that front four for the Bears can figure out the, uh, the offensive line and the protection of Richley. 34.6 ticks before the end of the half. 16-0 Richland after the short field goal from that fella right there, number five, Ryan Wolski. A little bit of a windy night, although it's pretty warm, about 60 degrees. Could and be a lot worse. There are other stadiums in the Tri-Cities where it would be freezing tonight. Second time tonight he's had that football blow off the tee. Wolski, end over end kick. Room to field it is Cannoli who bobbles it. And from the four, won't get much. Tackled at the 14. So a lot of field, not a lot of time, not a lot of success passing tonight. If you're uh, Coach Ian Petrie, I got to think. You're going to do one of two things. Just say, hey, I'm pretty happy to be down only 16 to nothing. I almost think you just run here. Because it could be 25 or 26 More, to nothing. yeah. And uh, the other option is just surprise him with something. A little halfback option. Richland was tricky. They tried to hook, hook and ladder, ladder in the first quarter. Jinx. Yeah, something like that. Jinx. Time for maybe four plays. And they will just nope, run it. Alec run. Doyle has some yeah. room. Stay in bounds. But, uh, stay in bounds, and that'll... Drain the clock down. It'll stop because of the first down. Tackled by Alec Chapman. So uh, two Alex getting their names and numbers called on that one. Make me feel better if you laughed at my lame jokes. <laughs> and this will be most likely the final run play. It will be because Doyle did not get the first down. That's final it. run play of the first half. Clock trickling down to zeros. 16 nothing Bombers. In control, first round of the WIAA 4A playoffs. And it's been a fun one. Halftime show coming up next. You're watching high school football on SWX. Thank you very much, Greg Talbot. Yeah. The man we like to call handsome here. Oh, stop. Joining me on the broadcast, I am Sam Adams' evil twin brother, Brian Levitan, I say that because I'm bald and I have a goatee too. 16 to nothing, our score, Richland on top of Central Valley. Want to welcome our Spokane viewers listening to the uh, inmates run the asylum tonight down here <laughs> in the Tri-Cities. It's been a good football game. Bombers have controlled it the first two quarters, but Central Valley's defense has certainly helped keep the Bears in this one and prevented it from getting out of hand. Yeah, a game that could have been a lot worse, Brian. 16 nothing. but let's keep in mind, uh, three field goals for nine of those 16 points. Well, we've got some special players on the football field and also some coaches with track records that uh, are, to say the least, very long. Rick GM Petrie, one of the iconic coaches in high school football, not only in Eastern Washington, but across the state. Got 146 wins in his career, won a state championship back in 1997 with the Bears. It's actually his 33rd year at Central Valley, 23rd year as the head coach. He's been an assistant coach in his career for as long as he's been a head coach. He's a guy who earned his keep and a guy that was a football player as well at the college level. Absolutely true, and you're talking about coaches. There's one coach you might recognize in the last name there. That's uh, Jack Elway, the father of Hall of Fame quarterback and Denver Broncos GM and president John Elway, who I believe was 10 or 11 years old, somewhere in that range, <laughs> maybe eight years old, when, uh, when uh, Coach Ian Petrie was playing for Grays Harbor Community College where Jack Elway was the head coach. And Mike Neidholt, of course, a uh, terrific coach with the Richland Bombers, eighth year as the head man, 21 years in as, as an assistant. Best postseason to finish, 2013, Greg. Lost in the state quarterfinals to Federal Way, 41-34. A lot of people think this is the year he could go further than that. Absolutely true. And speaking of that game, we, we remember that season, Federal Way that year, and then the season after. Man, 
well, that, that Federal A team, uh, they almost beat Chiawana, who went on to win the state championship last year. So losing to Chiawana, uh, rather losing to that Federal A team, nothing to be ashamed of. Well, Mike Neithold, the head coach of the Bombers, the only Bomber alum to be a head coach. He was the starting quarterback. You see number 11 there with a full head of hair. Always uh, remember those days myself. Uh, was the starting quarterback on the 75 Bomber team, making its first ever appearance in the state championship game. Runner-ups in that one. And uh, later winning with J.D. Covington, the same head coach he had back then in 1981, their first of two state championships. So Mike Neithold, the coach now, but has a long history that dates back to his high school days with the Richland Bombers. Second half coming up, as well as highlights. 16 nothing Bombers on top of Central Valley. First round of the 4A WIAA state playoffs. Sixteen nothing, Richland on top of Central Valley. Second half, just about ready to get started. But first, let's find out, Greg, how we got there. The bad night for Central Valley in the first half started almost immediately. They did have a couple good plays, but man, uh, there was a fumble. There was a tip that ended up being an interception. They eventually got a fumble for us by Lakota Wills. Richland defense was everywhere in the first quarter. Yeah, Breck and Gallagher there with the 21-yard interception return. You see that beautiful deflection by Lakota Wills, who was setting up residence in the backfield of Central Valley. And, and this then was Lakota again. Another big play by number 45. Balls loose and a terrific job by Tanner Sloan, their veteran quarterback, of preventing another six points by the Bomber defense. And a great March. play. But what, a, what a first half Griffey March had on punt returns, kick returns, receiving. Sometimes almost no space breaks up a huge game. Downright surgical with his route running and big turnover here on the uh, on the kickoff. Bombers get it. Leads to three points. Ended up with three field goals. Bears had some success with uh, Arino and Sloan making connections. But I'll tell you what, their offensive passing game, he has got no time. I can't imagine a play where he's got more than five or six seconds in the pocket. Big key to the second half, if you ask me, Brian, is trying to get the offensive line for Central Valley to step their game up, give their quarterback and wide receivers a little bit of extra time so they can do something besides run. Boy, Paxton Stevens showing off his arm strength there, but uh, had one interception. Other than that, played a pretty good first half. 16-0 Richland, second half coming up. Bears have the football to start the third. Central Valley Bears won the opening toss and deferred to the second half. Down 16 to nothing, an opportunity here for Central Valley to get right back in this football game. Wolski, a low bouncing kick, fielded at the 30 yard line and returned to the 45 by Jace McCammon. And that could be a little bit of a gift for Central Valley. I'll tell you what, you know, give him only a 55-yard field to work with. That is a manageable field for a team that has not been able to go deep so far tonight. One of the two turnovers, though, just to play devil's advocate here, on special teams by Richland, and it was on a bungled kickoff. So perhaps testing the Bears' sure-handedness in their return game. Handoff to Gage Cannoli, who loses a yard. And we're looking at some of those first half stats. It has been a slow go offensively. It has been the slowest of goes offensively, really. Will Sloan, you see the quarterback there, seven for nine, efficient, but 11 yards. And Gage Cannoli, their horse at running back, who's been very effective this season, just four carries for 20 yards. Doyle, Alec Doyle, been their best option thus far offensively. Yeah, leading receiver only has 17 yards. Second and 12, so the good field position now becomes a second and long. Cannoli tries to escape, but unsuccessful, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. So not a lot of passing success, not a lot of running success for Central Valley. Really, this Richland defense, they have an interception, they have a forced fumble, they've gotten a kickoff back. They have done just about everything pretty much perfectly so far tonight. Coach Jim Petrie in our conversation this week said his biggest was con concern was how effective they could be on offense against the Richland defense. He knew his defense could play. Sloan with time, throws, finds space in the middle of the field, caught by Ben Craig for a first down. No, they're gonna say it was trapped and it's 
It was complete. Boy, it looked like somebody had said it was. Now that was the Richland crowd. That's how I got thrown off. And with that pass, he just doubled his passing yardage on the night. Big third down conversion. And with pressure in his face, Tanner Sloan. Beautiful. He had that. So first down from the 43, Sloan, a little time. A little bubble pass there, intended for Jace Edwards. Squirts through his hands, incomplete. Well, I gotta say I'm impressed that they came out firing in this second half, going to the air a couple of times, showing they're unafraid, and, and the offensive line giving them a little bit more time to work with. Tanner Sloan has been less of a thrower down the field than he was last season, mostly because of how good Central Valley's defense is. Threw for 700 less yards than he did last year. But he has the ability to uh, sling it. Second down and 10. Play clock down to two. He just get the snap off. Cannoli tackled by Lakota Wills, but not before he gathers four yards on that run. And Cannoli showing his, his quick start, his agility there, because he should have been taken down to the backfield. Take Little a look, look at, at this that last catch. play. That's the right angle. Oh. Yeah, and the uh, Richland the other fans had a reason to, yeah. to, the to other, show their dismay. The other angle made it look like a catch. I'm not so sure there. Big third down and six with the ball on the 39 of the Richland Bombers. They're still out of field goal range, are the Bears. Sloan out of the shotgun with four receivers. Pumps. Goes sideline. A man open, but he overshot. Nathan Bannon incomplete. So fourth and six. And if you're Coach GM Petrie, what do you do here? And how did he how were they able to almost have that? Well, you'll see the replay, you'll see it. They really formed a pocket and gave him time to throw for one of the first times tonight. The offensive line, they clearly in halftime got some talking to. Because look, they really made a pocket for him and gave him some time to throw. That has been a rare sight so far tonight. Bannon got Ahead of the defense. Sloan was just trying to throw that. Wow, they're going to attempt the field goal what here from the 39. 57 yard? No, how much 56 is it? 56-yard field goal by Rikau. Wow! And he split the uprights like it was nothing. That was like, was it 57 yards? That would have been good from 62. You know, the Central Valley football team has a history of grooming kickers for the next level and beyond. Mike Hollis of the Oakland Raiders, remember him? Nine years in the NFL. He's a Central Valley grad, and Ryan Rikau following in those footsteps. That had extra, that had extra no space, too. That could have gone, I don't think that could have been another five yards. Still would have hit it. It's like he's playing golf and he just dropped one right on the green. Well, Richland in the first half, 16 unanswered points. Central Valley responds to begin the second half. But does take quite a bit of time off the clock. 9.37 left in the third quarter. I think from the Bears side of the football field, if you're Coach GM Petrie and company, you're, you're happy that you came away with some points to start out the second half. You have a very opportunistic defense that has the ability to score, not just make plays or to stop another team. And one touchdown here, a quick six, and you're right back in this football game. Richland starts playing on its heels. It gets interesting. Rika will kick it off. And after the 57-yard field goal, he puts that one in the back of the end zone. Richland will begin from its own 20-yard line and try to answer the first points of the football game by the Bears. Now we said a second ago, Sloan, the quarterback for Central Valley, had a rough first half, only 11 yards through the air. Contrast that with Paxton Stevens. Very efficient, 9 for 13, but 155 yards. Stevens had that one interception ill-advised, which snuffed out a drive, but can afford to take risks with the way the Bombers have been paying de playing defense for most of this football game. Handoff to Wills. His biggest run of the football game. Gets eight yards. Wills, very quiet, just 11 yards on seven carries in the first half. 
He got eight yards on that run alone. So a couple anomalies to begin the second half. Central Valley offensive line holding for the quarterback. And Lakota Wills getting enough space to make something happen with a run up the middle. On second and one, Wicks green pass to March. Makes one man miss. Gets the first down and an additional five yards. And he's the right receiver, Brian, to make that kind of play. And, and But most of the time in high school with screen passes, they don't get a lot of space. The receivers always kind of line up near each other on screen plays to try to make a block. So you need a guy who's shifty and not much space. Griffey March might be the definition on that Richland team. They need to put uh, Griffey March on the Food Network because he's slicing and dicing this Central Valley defense oh like a sous chef. Oh, man. Handoff on first down to Lakota Wills. And he'll get 10 yards. Nine and 10 yards on his first two carries of the second half. He had 11 yards on seven carries in the first half. You know, you usually save those, those zingers for, for blowouts in the fourth quarter. You're going to them pretty early tonight. I just want to give our Spokane viewers a little something to chew on. Oh, man. <laughs> Boo. Second and short. Wills gets the first down. Trying to fight for a couple of more. Stopped at the 47 yard line with a 16 3 lead, 8 14 to go. Nice clock sustaining drive here, it looks like, in the making by the Richland Bombers. Dakota Wills led the I did not see that flag on the far side of the field so uh, penalty against the Bombers backs him up and negates the first down holding call 10 yards or personal foul I'm sorry I missed the hand signal big one so first down and, and just a long way Dead ball, personal foul, number three on the offense. After the first down, 15-yard penalty, new series. Totally avoidable, too. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the state playoffs against a quality opponent, you just can't give them gift-wrapped negative plays like that. Turnovers have hurt the Bears in the first half, but penalties were an issue for the Bombers and appear to be now, too. On first down, that's Kyle Whitby, who will get eight yards in Kyle, the scat back. But he's had a lot of success against this Bears team. And I just want to clear things up for folks. That 15-yard penalty did not negate the first down. The way I worded it might have been confusing. It was still a first down, but they're backed up 15 yards. New series, right. New series, and Whitby gets eight yards there. And it seems like he's been the gasher. He's had more success. Kind of running off the tackles a little bit. Stevens with three receivers to the near side, skips it to Ryan Wolski. Third down. It's now the third and short, third down and about two yards. This is the kind of situation where you saw, Brian, during the regular season on SWX. This is where more often than not they went to Lakota Wills. A short yarded situation, kind of expect him to pound it up there. But that's not where he succeeded tonight. So I think, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to see a, we're going to see Kyle Whitby in the backfield. Bombers have been so good at converting third downs all season long because they can hurt you in so many different ways. Whitby looked like he fell down there at the line of scrimmage and was able to dive forward to the first down marker, but just short. Well, they'll move the sticks. They'll give him the first down. Yeah, the line judge made the, he, made, he motioned the other side. His initial ruling was he was down short, but this is the right call. Yeah, he tripped over one of his linemen's ankles there and was able to just hold it together enough to get the first. From the 43, Whitby room, spins, 
Gets dragged down by Wyatt Wickham at the 49. Already sucked off three minutes of the third quarter clock here. Have the Bombers with this drive. Second down. Flag on the play. Another penalty. On the offense, 55, five yard penalty. Another penalty against the Bombers. And a, a drive that has uh, been clock sustaining and seemingly effective. So a seemingly effective drive. <laughs> Stymied a little bit by penalties. Stevens gonna throw on second and eight. Passes caught by Alex Chapman. Gets in front of the defense. And just tripped up there inside the 15 yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Jace Edwards, and you almost, but not before he gets 40 yards. Yeah, you almost expected him to throw in the afterburners that time because Chapman has that breakaway speed. Boy, he'll split the defense in a hurry. Chapman leading the Bombers in yards per catch at 18 and a half yards per catch, second in the Mid-Columbia Conference. Check that third overall this season, but he'll hurt you if you forget about him. And all of a sudden, after giving up their first point to the game, Richland here looking to respond. First and 10 from the 13, Whitby. Ducks under a couple of potential tacklers. Oh! Ball is loose and recovered by Central Valley. Second turnover of the game by the Bears, recovered by Terrell Harrison. Oh. Johnny on the spot. What a break for Central Valley. I think Richland is about to score a touchdown, the momentum they had built on that drive. That's huge. Let's take a look at this one more time. I'm not convinced that wasn't down by contact, but the referee has a better angle than we did. It's hard to see amongst the uh, sea of legs and jerseys. Oh, uh, see, I'm not sure. Well, the referee was closer. He has the right call, I'm sure. No instant replay, the high school level. First and 10 from the five yard line for the Bears. Shadow of their own goal post here. An opportunity, and Tanner Sloan been a little bit more aggressive throwing the football, but will he this deep in his own end? Hand off to Doyle, who's been Central Valley's most effective runner. And he gives them a little breathing room out to the 10-yard line. Brecken Gallagher in on the tackle. He, of course, had that first touchdown for the Richland Bombers. And in case you're just joining us, that's right. Richland's offense hasn't scored tonight. Hasn't scored a touchdown tonight. They have three field goals in a defensive touchdown. So Central Valley's defense has still been terrific. They actually haven't allowed a touchdown yet. Hand off to Canoli on second and four. That was Doyle, I stand corrected there. He's been their primary runner here in the second half and he doesn't get anything. I'll bring up a third down and five. Key third down and five after that fumble that prevented the score. At some point, the Central Valley Bears need to turn these turnovers into some points, some offense, and not just escape. Sloan will throw. Quick pass. Caught. Not enough. Depends where they mark it. And let's, uh, let's wait until they make that decision. He didn't get it. Close, though. Just a yard short, I think. Yep, yard short. That's fourth down and, Brian, and inches. Now, to your point a second ago, Brian, talking about how they need to score on these drives, the very first key to the game the coaches gave you, capitalize on mistakes. Central Alley not been able to do it on offense tonight. Oh, wow. So it's fourth down and inches. If we can get a shot of that yard marker, it is and not much. Punt. And they're going to punt it away. Wow. And, and be careful here. They do have a great punter. This might be a possibility where 
they do a little trickery and see if they can't. Did Richland jump? No, they didn't do. No they flag. Didn't, they didn't take, take the chance. Griffey March will catch it cleanly at the 34. Bounce around and gather seven yards. 4.07 to go before the end of the third quarter. 16 to three. Then a little bit of a chess match here in the third. First round of the WIA State Playoffs on SWX. Another look at the uh, replay here of the Kyle Whitby fumble. Let's look for the ball. And where his, uh, there's just no you way to see. tell yeah. where it came out. There's no way. It looks like he's down here, and then it yeah. sports out. Regardless, the Bear is unable to convert as they were stopped on on third down. Dakota Wills, boy, he's starting to wear down that uh, front four. He gets 12 yards. Now let me bring this back to the previous position for Central Valley, if you'll allow me to, Brian. Fourth and inches, uh, it, I'm not sure, fourth and inches, fourth and a yard, whatever it was. If you're down a couple scores, not that you're midway through the third quarter, you gotta score a touchdown. It's it's almost a little bit, not even questionable. It, it just seems like you'd want to give your offense a little bit of confidence and let them try on fourth and inches. Will's got the first down on that 12-yard run, and first down from the 45 of Central Valley, and the pass here could go the distance. Not quite. Stopped at the 15-yard line. Ryan Piper. Sophomore wide receiver. It's like he's got a whole toolbox full of receivers to go to at any point. And he'll cut you up in so many different ways and make you bleed. And they brought the blitz. Four or five guys breaking into the backfield that time. He recognized the blitz, read the coverage, go into his safety blanket on the near side. Great job also of handling a low snap there and getting that ball quickly to Piper for the first down and the extra yards he was able to make happen afterward. First and 10 from the 15. Same thing. Quick pass deflected there. Now this, the, that was uh, Chase Gilbert, by the way. That's how this Bears team hurts you, deflecting passes, getting in the lane, and making that six points the other way. Well, that's the thing. The, the last couple of plays that they've been doing, now look at the defensive line. They haven't been going up the middle. They've been going to the outside, trying to beat the beat the, beat the beat the tackles around the outside, trying to get to the quarterback that way and deflect a screen pass. They're not rushing up the middle. They're going around the outside. But now look at Lakota Wills in the backfield. They might run him up the gut here. Second and 10 with Wills in the backfield. They do go to 45. What I tell you? Breaks a couple tackles and reaches to the 10-yard line. Ball squirts free, but after he was down, gets seven yards. And, and that's the thing about this six foot three, 225 man child that plays for, for Richland is he'll wear you down. Even if you, you stop him early, he'll just wear you out. And that's the right call by Mike Neidhold. Again, recognizing what the defense have been doing the last couple of plays. Going to the outside, trying to stop a pass, give it up the middle, make him respect Lakota. Just 11 yards in the first half, easily over 50 yards thus far in the second. But the Bombers haven't been able to come away with points. Stevens, plenty of time. Quick pass to Griffey March over the middle. And he slides into the end zone easily for the second touchdown of the game for the Richland Bombers, and it's 22 to three. He's like a little binky for number 17. Worth noting, first offensive touchdown of the game for the Richland Bombers. Took him a long time. Reckon Gallagher took a deflected pass and ran it into the end zone as an interception early in the first quarter. Those are the only two scores, and the Bombers had the extra point to make it a 20-point lead. See, now, and now I'm wondering if the Central Valley coaching staff is questioning their choice on the last drive to punt it away on fourth and inches. Because maybe you go for it, maybe you get it, and then you continue driving, maybe you get a field goal or something. This is, in a way, that was their worst case scenario for punting it away. My feeling is, if you're Coach D.M. Petrie, having been coaching at Central Valley for 33 years. You know your team. You know your team. Yeah. And on that same drive there, remember we had Chase Gilbert breaking free and getting a hand in the backfield on a screen pass by Paxton Stevens. He's a half second sooner. That's six points the other way. 
So he has a lot of belief in how opportunistic his defense is at scoring points. That was but nearly I intercepted, too. That, was a, that, that pass could have been behind him. The thing about it for Paxton Stevens is he is so comfortable throwing to Griffey March because he's so sure-handed. He's willing in tight windows to throw the football. I will say this, though. Central Valley's been uh, really playing with fire in terms of the situations their defense has been put in, and it was just a matter of time before they give up six points. I don't care how good you are on defense. Kind of a miracle they, they haven't given up another touchdown until this point. Astounding. Fielded at the 20-yard line. Braden Arino takes it out. To the 20, excuse me, to the 33. So a crucial drive, I would say here, Brian, for Central Valley. Yeah, it's Not a, make or break. There's about 14 minutes left in the game. But Richland and offense, they, they've been a running team most of the night. They've been eating the clock on most of these plays, even though they've been able to pass sometimes. Out. Th th this drive, I think, is going to be make or break for Central Valley to hang in there. Need a touchdown before the end of the third quarter, I would say. First and 10 from their own 33. Bears trying to answer the touchdown. Lakota. Lakota Wills. Offense, defense, it doesn't matter. He'll make a difference no matter what. I know that's at least his second sack. I've counted two just off memory, plus he had the forced fumble. Two sacks. Maybe two and a half sacks, a forced fumble, and a tip that became an interception. I think it's two and a half. I do remember I the combined yeah. sack with Adam McShane. That's a good point. But he is he is just, uh, he's indefensible. Fake the pitch to, uh, the handoff to Canoli, then pitch it to Arino, who goes around the outside and gets a yard, but that was second and 18. It's it's going to be third and, and 17. Xander Sloan going to have to throw it here, and they've tried to stretch the field a couple of times passing, but he's missed. He's had the opportunity. He's just missed his target. One factor here uh, for the Bears, Greg Pulley, their star receiver, tore his ACL early on, and that's certainly hurt their passing attack. It's been more of a dink and dunk scenario for the rest of the season. Arino spins out of a tackle. A flag as Whitby brings him down at the 30, still well short of the first. And a Central Valley football player down. Can't get a good look at the numbers, but a couple of the staff. Number 12 on the offense. So block in the back, that's against Central Valley. I saw a hold on the Central Valley defense. Uh, I wonder who's down too. there. I hope that's not Tanner Sloan. That's right about where he would have been throwing the football from, their starting quarterback. It looks like a bigger player from here, but it's just so hard to see. Got to wait for the number. Yeah, I see a glove on the right hand. That wouldn't be a back. So the penalty against the Bears, which was a block in the back decline to bring up fourth down. And the injured player, one of the linemen for Central Valley. Or is it their tight end? I think it's Terrell Harrison. 82, that is Terrell. Yeah. He's able to walk off with some assistance. Fourth down. Bears will have to punt it again. Griffey March will let this one bounce. Fields it at the 17. Gets a few positive yards. Oh, uh, is there a flag on that? Did not see a flag. That would have been on Tate and Gillespie, but no flag comes in. Yeah, the Bears... Uh, Basically holding their hands up, wondering what happened. Take another look. Here it comes. Yeah, clearly a late hit. Yeah. On uh, Chase Gilbert. 
Bombers are a very physical football team. Game I had to call earlier this season, got to was fun, was the uh, Kamiakin Richland game. And boy, the second half, it was like uh, yellow all over the place. A lot of physicality. Now, although we're not even in the fourth quarter yet, I would say if, if Richland scores on this drive, Brian, this might be out of reach. The way that this team, which can pass the ball so well, can can control the football with the running game, and then they have that luxury of three very capable running backs who are probably 1,000-yard rushers if they get all the carries, but they have fresh legs all the time, and they have three very different backs. It, uh, it makes it very difficult if you fall behind more than two possessions to get back in the football game. This game is playing out very similar to the Kamiakin game, I might add. Under a minute to go, Whitby with room. And that's how he'll hurt you. He finds a little seam and explodes and gets 12 or 15 yards after these three and four yard carries. Great high school running back. Another bomber first down. And you're starting to Stops see the, the clock momentarily. And I would say even though Central Valley got their first points of the game in this third quarter, Brian, I think the defense is starting to show some cracks here in the third quarter. Well, they've been on the field quite a bit, so yeah. it's a fatigue factor too. Been on the field quite a bit, and Richland is just so deep. Whitby, who's been so successful, not getting much there as Ben Craig comes in on the corner blitz, tackles him for a loss of one, 22 seconds before the third quarter. Bombers adding seven to the three for the Bears, making it a 20-point lead, and they will let the clock tickle down to nothing. 23 to three. Paxton Stevens and the Richland Bombers one quarter away from moving on to the next round of the state playoffs. It's Richland and Central Valley and fourth quarter action coming up next on SWX. Bombers have it, second and 11. From their own 36 yard line. Axton Stevens running for just the second time in the football game. Gets just across the line of scrimmage. I think that was a broken play, but uh, Paxton Stevens had a great first half. And then he finally connected with Griffey March for a touchdown here in the third quarter to put this game a little further out of the reach of the Bears. Not quite ready to say this one is done, but with the way the Bombers can run the football, and the way they've been playing defense against Central Valley, it's not going to be easy. And off to Whitby. Huge hole. Still going. And cut down at the 25-yard line. Officially marked down at the 23. Well, you might not say it, Brian, but I'll say it. If Richland scores a touchdown, this game, I think, is done. 41-yard run from Kyle Whitby. And the Richland's Bombers, they're driving to the side of the field with their student section, with all the Richland fans in attendance. They've got the momentum here, right about in the red zone. Four receivers in Elgin in the backfield. Stevens fakes the handoff, runs up the middle, gets two yards. Looked like a design run there by Paxton Stevens. Who has some athletic ability, but being a very tall, lanky quarterback. Not a mobile QB by trade. Good room. Pass caught by Ryan Wolski at the 10-yard line. And Ryan Wolski, by the way, is a Griffey March in training. Saw him make a couple of pass uh, uh, catches just like that against Kamiakin a few weeks ago, and he can make those those tough back shoulder catches like that. And it, he bobbled it midway down on that catch, and somehow it'll rain it in. That is that is beyond his years. I think he's got stickum on his gloves, but they have some sure-handed receivers here at Richland High School. Stevens will run. 
Going off the guard inside the five-yard line. A flag goes up in the air. Flag on the play. It looked like it was away from the run. It'll be second and five, depending on what the penalty Personal is. Personal foul, number 76 on the offense. Hands to the face. Dante Powell getting whistled. That was away from the football by about 10 yards. And uh, it'll be second and 20 now. And penalties again, along with his Central Valley defense. One of the reasons why Richland doesn't have more than one offensive touchdown. Absolutely true. And you know, with all the, all the all the defensive penalties they've committed, kind of surprised that Central Valley hasn't been able to turn in a touchdown of their own. In a way, it gives Paxton Stevens a little more room to operate. He'll hand off to McLean Elgin. It's, it's first and 20. Bears, with the ball on the five-yard line, deciding to take the penalty, the 15-yard personal foul penalty, and uh, allow the Bombers to have it another first down opportunity which results in just a one yard gain clock winding down bears really need a stop here if they want to keep their season alive stevens rolling out off his back foot threw it away in the vicinity of Brecken Gallagher, his tight end. Kind of took a little deep breath there, wondering if he was going to do another back footer into traffic like he did in the first half, and he was smart enough to throw it where no one could get it. And here's where the Richland Bombers are arguably the most team to be frightened of in the Mid-Columbia Conference. You know, even if you do stop him here, Like I said, even if you do manage to stop him here, Brian, and force a fourth down from, say, I don't know, the 40-yard line, they've already made a field goal from there. They have a legitimate field goal unit, the only one in the, in the Tri-Cities area. So, you know, stopping them on the 20-yard line might be enough to, to beat a team like, like Southridge during the regular season in the MCC or a team like Pasco. That is not enough against a team like Richland. They will kick field goals and beat you that way. 25 yards in penalties. Backs the Bombers up to the 37-yard line. Low snap, Stevens picks it up. Quick pass is intercepted and booted up in the air. They're oh, going to say it. they're going to say that was incomplete. I thought it would have been a fumble, and the ball was loose. And wow, the uh, cornerback there for the uh, Central Valley Bears, Jace Edwards, and it looked like Rhett Levin got a little tangled up. Was that Levin or March? I couldn't get a good look. I think I saw March. Might have been March. It's yeah, March. it was March. He was running right at the football as a timing route and ended up hitting Edwards, who had position to catch the ball. It was actually accidentally a really good, well-timed <laughs> hit. There might have been some helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact there, but I believe inadvertent. They're down and goal from the 37. Stevens will let it fly to Griffey March, wide open. Makes one guy miss, and he'll dance on in for another six. 37-yard touchdown strike on third down and a country mile. Nail in the coffin for the Central Valley Bears. Great season for them, but Paxton Stevens in Griffey March on their second touchdown hookup just ended this game. So much space, man. How do you get that much space? How do you leave him open that much? And so deceptive with his runs after. He's not even fast or running fast. He's just, as Wolski there splits the uprights, Greg. But he, he catches the ball. He's got three yards between him and the guy that's going to tackle him. And you have no belief that the guy in the white shirt has a chance. Made two guys miss there. They didn't even get a finger on him. How excellent has he been tonight? 
Second touchdown catch of the game for Griffey March. His sixth on the season. He's approaching 100 yards receiving. That's right. to do it against yet. this Central Valley Bears defense, how good they are playing the, the pass. Been a little bit of a coming out party for Paxton Stevens introducing himself and that little rocket launcher on his right shoulder to the rest of Eastern Washington, I might add. I'm really surprised that Central Valley, this elite secondary, has only managed to force one interception. But then again, Stevens, minus the cannon, he's also accurate. And he's worked with these receivers for years. Well, I don't know about years, starting junior. I mean, through, through, through youth football. Sure, that's a good point. Those are all the guys through youth football. They've played together in the past. Look at me arguing with you. Oh, please. Just tell me to be quiet. <laughs> Kickoff, fielded by, or attempted to be fielded by Canoli, who, who lets it bounce and then grabs it at the four. Puts his head down and makes it an eight-yard return. Bears at this point playing for pride. And one has to believe it'll be hibernation time. With 8.51 to go, down 30-3 to, to the Richland Bombers. For this Central Valley team, you know, losing arguably your best offensive weapon, Greg Pulley, to a torn ACL early in the season. Just finding a way and grinding out what will likely be a, an 8-3 season. Ripping off three straight wins coming into the playoffs. Tanner Sloan with time. Quick pass to the outside. Caught by Braden Arino. And on first and ten, they get two yards to make it second and eight. Bears uh, hurrying it up a little bit on offense here. Time is running out. They need a quick six. Something. Reno again. The intended target of Sloan, but he couldn't quite connect. Tanner Sloan. I think it's important when you have a senior and you don't have seniors cut from the cloth that number 10 is cut from very often. Two-year starter. Close to 4,000 yards in his career. And not just a terrific football player, a great leader on this team willing to do whatever to help his team win. 3.9 grade point average. Going to be an engineer. Study that in college and may even have the chance to play at the next level. As he completes a pass here for a first down on third and long. Now what's really interesting about this game, Brian, as we kind of start to wind this clock down and get closer to the, to the fate of this game for the Central Valley Bears. I would be interested to know on SWX tonight, which is every night at 10.30 here on SWX, what they predicted the score of this game would be because the Richland Bombers, I feel like this year, yeah, they have that one loss to Gonzaga Prep. I feel like they've almost been a little bit overlooked in the state this year. Quick pass to the far side, intended for a streaking Ben Craig. But those longer passes to stretch the field, again, Sloan just hasn't quite been able to connect. Now, continuing on that point, there's a lot of, there is a misconception, I think, and maybe it's a little brother, big brother complex of Spokane and Tri-Cities. I think there's a little bit of a misconception that, that a good Greater Spokane League team is better than a great Mid-Columbia Conference team. And I think the last couple weeks, that might just be proven pretty wrong definitively. Sloan steps up in the pocket. There's only so long a pocket could sustain itself when you're playing the Richland Bombers. And here's number 59 saying, hey, don't forget about me, guys. John Hardy is a playmaker on that line. And he just got his first sack of the football game. And just continuing on, I think we, I think it got shown you know, last week, even though, yes, Central Valley did beat Chiawana. Kennewick upset Mount Spokane in a big way. Kamai can beat Rogers playing in the first playoff game in a handful of years. Richland obviously beat Lewis and Clark. The MCC this year, even without Chiawana, is a real force to be reckoned with in these playoffs. In the third and long, Sloan trying to find somebody open down the field and just threw a little screen pass, a little bubble screen to Arena, which you know is the only pass he's really felt comfortable throwing yeah. against this Richland defense. You know, I think the Bombers, I haven't seen some of those teams on the, there's number 70, by the way, who was hurt earlier. Wyatt Wickham 
So I thought it was 82, Terrell Harrison. It was hard to see his numbers, uh, but uh, Wyatt Wickham, the freshman offensive lineman who's been starting on crutches, and so you hate to see that, but you hope it's nothing too serious and he can be back ready to go next season as such a promising career at Central Valley High School. Yet another freshman starting already. Griffey March fields it on the run and scoots across midfield to the 47. 7.37 left in the third, in the fourth quarter. <laughs> 30 to three. Richland comfortably in front. We'll be back for the finale here, the big finish on SWX from Lampson Stadium. Thirty to three, Richland in command over Central Valley here. First round of the four A state playoffs, and let's flex our muscles. And tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Max Muscle Sports Nutrition, located in front of Gold Gold Gym in Richland. Set a goal, make a plan, get results. Max Muscle, a proud sponsor of high school sports on SWX. No question, Griffey March. He can make catches in really tight spaces. No space. Doesn't lose concentration when you're going over the middle with a lot of white jerseys around you. That can just make you nervous. And uh, when he gets the ball, give him just a little bit of room. He's not a, a burner, but he is fast. And it's almost better to be quick than fast on a football field. That's what he is, and deceptive after the catch. Got a new running back in for the Richland Bombers. Victor Strasser going to get some opportunities with the 27-point lead for the Bombers. They, uh, of course, taking on Central Valley here in the first round of the state playoffs. The second time ever that these two schools have played each other. The only other time was also in the postseason, a crossover game back in 2008, won by Rick Petrie and the Bears, 35-21. to 21. A different script written tonight. Strasser gets a couple of more to bring up third and three. So with Richland moving on uh, with a win in this game against Central Valley, looking ahead, we know one of two teams they could be playing. Uh, looking at this, coming up, uh, the game for the teams they'll face is tomorrow at 2 o'clock, Moses Lake or Bellarmine Prep. you got to think it's going to be Bellarmine Prep, a traditionally very good football team. And Moses Lake lost to Southridge this year. Moses Lake, a little bit on a down year, still made the playoffs. Got to imagine next week it'll be Richland against Bellarmine Prep. Paxton Stevens still in at quarterback. He's keeping that arm warm. And, you know, you look at this Bomber football team, this is the fun part, I think, about high school football is in a state like Washington, everybody just has impressions based on population, uh, based on traditions or coaches at different schools and recruiting and all the other stuff that goes on uh, about what different teams in different regions can do. And you can look at stats for players and really get confused. And when you look at a Paxton Stevens, for example, just 13 touchdowns. 1,700 yards passing coming into this game. I'm not exactly a, a talent evaluator, but you'd have to be blind to not know this kid could play Division I AA or 1A football. On the fake, Wolski. They try to fake it on fourth down and don't get it. He goes out of bounds, so Central Valley will take over on downs. And forgive me for talking over some plays here with the game a little bit in hand. I think there's just some things to, to forward think about. But this Richland team, I think, them being ranked sixth is a situation where they're they're just being penalized for a loss against one of the best teams in the state. Undefeated Gonzaga Prep. And a loss that almost wasn't because they missed two field goals in that game. Three-point game. In a three-point game. And he had a quarterback, a very talented quarterback, who had never started a football game in his life and had 14 practices under his belt because he had a broken back all spring and summer. I think Paxton Stevens should stick to throwing footballs at quarterback rather than dunking basketballs. I don't think that's going to be a problem this winter. I think he's going to stick to throwing footballs. Wouldn't worry. Tanner Sloan, the starting quarterback for the Central Valley Bears. Probably his last game in the Columbia Blue and White as the flag goes up in the air. Sloan 
coached by his father, Rick Sloan, as I said earlier. False start on the offense, number 57, five yard penalty. So the five yard penalty backs him up a little bit, but Rick Sloan, the offensive coordinator for Central Valley, also the head basketball coach for the Bears. And uh, Tanner Sloan is one of their three point marksmen. So uh, great article in the spokesman uh, earlier this week, just talking about that relationship. And uh, Tanner Sloan was talking about how wistful he was as he completes this pass over the middle uh, for what looks like a first down, close to it. But he was talking about how wistful he was. You know, his, his, he could feel it his, you know, the, before the Chihuahua game. You know, all these guys I'm with, uh, it's going to be our last time together here and you know, putting on a helmet and throwing a football because he knows, especially with his academics, you know, he'll go to a place where he can find a good engineering school first before he could play uh, at the next level. But he knows that you know basketball is at least his, his lifeline to still be coached by his dad. He actually enjoys it quite a bit. And to still have some of his football teammates you know, to share you know, the, uh, the team experience with. And Sloan escapes pressure and does his uh, best Paxton Stevens impression there with the back foot throw across the field. On second and 10, Sloan with time. Finds Zorino, his safety valve. And 21 fights for the yards. The uh, Bombers clearly switching to the uh, prevent defense here. Dives out of bound to stop the clock with 5.30 to go. They will not wave the white flag quite yet. Bears, by the way, two players coming back who are already three-year starters. And Travis Hawkins, their, their Mike linebacker, and then Jordan Talafili, their nose tackle. Then Wyatt Wickham, who's on crutches right now, but let's hope nothing serious, and he'll be able to make it back in time. Well, that was a big hit. And the ball came loose, and Richland got it. Alec Doyle got punished. That was a little rib cage delivery there. Let's take a look at this one more time. He got hit. Boom. Yeah. Is that Brecken Gallagher? Can't tell. They'll see it was down by contact. No, they're going to say this is still Central Valley football. So. Yeah, down by contact. Okay. So uh, Sloan passes, bobbled by his intended target, Christian Williams. And I think it was pretty clear on that replay when he went down, his body was down, his shoulders were down, his back was down, and then the ball popped loose. Right call by the refs. So Central Valley, I think when you, you look to next year, I was touching on it, you know, you have, you have three guys, you know, to anchor your team around and a lot of talent coming back to build on what you have here. Of course, uh, Rick G.M. Petrie, their head coach in his sixth decade, I always have to say, is this the last year for coach? But in talking to him this week is Sloan completes the pass there on third down, but well short of the first down. In talking to him this week, you know, he said, I'm already retired as a teacher, did that six years ago, and I'm just having so much fun. You know, and it's one of these things like, you know, when you retire, you don't sit on the couch, not that I know, and watch football and, and eat popcorn all day. I mean, that would be fun for Sounds one like day a pretty out of life, week. yeah. Doesn't sound like a very healthy lifestyle. But uh, if you can, if you can, have that energy to, to spend time with the kids and, and you, you enjoy coaching them up and they're fun to be around and they have a great attitude, then why stop? And the knowledge that he can impart both as a football coach and life lessons as that ball was up in the air and almost intercepted is, uh, I mean, there's just, you can't put a price tag on that for the kids. Four oh six to go, Richland Bombers. We'll take over on downs. Talked about it already. Both these teams have great traditions. The Richland Bombers winning state championships in 1999. The last time, Monty Pearson was their head coach. And the first time in 81, when J.D. Covington was in charge. 4A state runner-ups twice. Central Valley, their only 
state championship coming under man across the field from us here, Rick G. M. Petrie. So Richland continues to operate out of the shotgun. But they'll keep handing off, run the clock. Just drain it down a little bit, giving a lot of the underclassmen a little opportunity. Ben Stanfield there. Actually a junior, so not an underclassman. And uh, I did not see Paxton Steven is still in the football game there. Don't want to hand it off quite yet. But anyways, this Richland team is going to play the winner of Bellarmine Prep Moses Lake. They're playing at Moses Lake tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Lions Field. Stanfield again. Turns the corner. And gets a first down, but runs out of bounds to stop the clock. I'm going to tell you this. I remember the Chihuahua Richland game we did. First one we did together last year. The, and the, the, yeah, that, that early game last year. And I'm going to say this. They lost that game, and it was a little bit of a blowout by the final score, kind of like this game here. Yeah. But they were in it a lot more than it appeared. And uh, I could Chihuahua. tell right then I against Chihuahua. Yeah. Uh, Chihuahua. And I remember thinking to myself then, this Bombers team is you know, a couple of players away this year. As a Whitby just runs up the middle for another first down. Excuse me, Stanfield. But uh, I remember thinking right then, this team's going to be special this year. And I know talking to Coach Nighthold this week, and I don't know if you have the same situation. You know, I said, Coach, a lot of guys out there are saying, this is the year you guys break through. Oh, this is the year. And you know what he said? I want to talk to you about Central Valley. <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, thanks, Bill Belichick. <laughs> That's funny. Stanfield again. Stanfield again on the run, and Paxton Stevens has been pulled there, and he'll take a seat after a very successful evening. Kay Jensen now the quarterback, sophomore. Boy, Paxton Stevens had 155 yards in the first half. He had at least that in the second half and a couple of touchdowns. But you're talking about two touchdowns, one interception, and close to 300 yards passing. Probably completing 60% of his passes against Central Valley. Against an elite secondary. 25 interceptions. I couldn't find the site myself, but Coach Ian Petrie told me that one of his players or coaches said that they had a national stat site that said they had the most interceptions of any team in the country. I would believe that. <laughs> you're, lucky, no, you're lucky to have one interception a game, which at this point in the season would be 10 interceptions. And then, then to think about what a junior quarterback and Griffey March and all these other receivers were able to do against that secondary. No, this Richland team is real. Like, if you haven't watched them before on SWX, this is only the second time we've had them on this season. You've been watching a, a team that has a real chance to go deep in the state playoffs. I'm talking maybe semifinals here. Maybe more based on tonight. Because don't forget, although Richland here, although they're at number six, we know they're that good. Central Valley entering tonight ranked just behind them in the most recent Seattle Times poll. This is the game you're watching. This is the number six team in the, in the state against the number seven team in the state. And if they're doing that to number seven, Richland can go deep. I, I thought just, you know, playing the score game, which is always dangerous math, but losing 13-10 to Gonzaga Prep at the beginning of the season, and clearly a young team and better at this point, and losing a game when you miss two field goals, and then Central Valley losing 35-13, a month ago that clearly that ranking was skewed. And you know if they make the Final Four who they're going to meet in their bracket, right, Brian? The Bullpups. So that'll be, uh, yep. that'll be a fun football game. We can only hope both teams stay alive and we can bring that to you on SWX because, man, what a great game that would be. Great rematch capability. Under a minute to go in the fourth quarter and in the season for the Central Valley Bears who will finish up at eight and three. And despite a disappointing loss here to Richland at Lampson Stadium tonight in the Tri-Cities, a lot to take away from this season. A defensive-minded team that grinded and took advantage of opportunities to claw their way into the state playoffs after losing their top offensive threat 
early on of the season did not make excuses after that last run there by Eric Walters. The clock will tick down to zeros and Richland will win it. The Bombers advance to the second round of the WIAA 4A State Playoffs. Well, they will face the winner of Bellarine Prep and Moses Lake tomorrow afternoon. Richland has reeled off 10 straight wins, 10 straight wins since a season opening loss to the Gonzaga Prep Bullpups. Both schools shaking hands. This one is in the books, 30 to three. Richland wins it and moves on in state. Post game show coming up right after this on SWX. The Richland Bombers walking off Lampson, the field at Lampson Stadium, victorious 30 to three. Richland over Central Valley, the first round of the WIAA 4A state playoffs, and they do it with great defense. Lakota Wills was just wreaking havoc in the backfield with two and a half sacks, a forced fumble, then a tip pass that resulted in an interception return by Brecken Gallagher, 21 yards into the end zone. And then in the second half, it was Paxton Stevens and Griffey March putting on a show with a couple of big touchdown passes. Our very own Greg Talbot is down on the field now with the head coach of the winning Richland Bombers. Gregors, take it away. Hey, thank you, Brian. Back here with Mike Neidhold, head coach of the Bombers. Coach, we were talking about this during the broadcast. Coming into this game, Central Valley, 25 interceptions this season. That's one of the most elite secondaries, yeah. not only in the state, sure. but in the whole country. How did you exploit that, only give up one interception, and manage to get a couple of touchdowns uh, against them? I, um, I don't know. Our kids just play. Our, you know, it's a credit to our, our coaching staff. They've made some adjustments at halftime, and we were able to run the ball, uh, keep the ball on the ground, burn some clock. Um, uh, you know, and our, our quarterback's pretty good to not throw, <laughs> throw the ball to the bad guys. And when he did, that was a desperation throw. It kind of worked out like a punt, so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll take that one. Central Valley, the number seven team in the state. You guys made pretty quick work of them. Uh, what are you most proud of of your team tonight? I'm most proud of our coaching staff. Uh, they came in at halftime. We weren't running the ball very well. They came in at halftime, made some great adjustments. Real proud of our defensive staff for coming up with a great, a great, uh, great game plan. How about a 57-yard field goal? Yeah, no kidding. That's unreal. No you know, kidding. That kid hit that thing. Yeah. That was awesome. It was kind of like, wow, that was cool. You know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our kids. I'm proud of our student body. We had a great crowd tonight. Uh, you know, it's just a great, great win for Richland. Thank you, Mike. We'll see you in the Thank next you. round. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hilarious, Ryan. Brian, back to you. Mike Neidhold, head coach of the Bombers, and the. Uh, the only Bomber alum to become a head coach at Richland and a member of the state runner-up team back in 1975, perhaps has his best opportunity to uh, take a team he's coached deep into the state playoffs. 30-3, to the final tonight. Richland on top of Central Valley. Bombers will take on either Bellarmine Prep or Moses Lake next week. And better believe SWX is going to have only the best playoff action next week. So tune in for that. For Greg Talbot, our entire production crew, my name is Brian Levitan. Thanks so much to our viewers, both in Spokane and Tri-Cities, for making us a part of your Friday night.